At 3 a.m. on October 7, 1864, the USS Washington opened fire on the CSS Florida, surprising the enemy. With its quick action, the US sailors were able to overpower the rebel crew. Within a short time, the Florida was in tow and Washu said on the way to the United States with its prize. The only problem with this amazingly easy victory was that the capture happened not on the high seas, but is in the confines of the neutral Brazilian Port of Salvador in Bahia, Brazil. The CSS Florida was built in Liverpool and departed the Mersey in March 1862 to start its commerce raiding activity. The ship contained nine cannons and a complement of 146 officers and sailors. Outfitted in the Bahamas, the Florida had run the blockade into Mobile Bay. After running the blockade again to Nassau, the Florida cruised the Atlantic of North and South America as well as the Caribbean. In July 1863, the Florida headed to France, where the ship spent almost six months in naval dock for repairs. During the stay, Lieutenant Charles Morris took over command. Operating once more in the mid-Atlantic, the ship preyed on U.S. commerce. On October 4, 1864, the Florida arrived in Bahia, where local authorities and the lead gave them a cheerful welcome. When the Florida arrived in Brazil, the U.S. authorities, naval, commercial, and diplomatic, were on the lookout for rebel activities. The U.S. minister in Brazil was vigilant for any indication of Brazilian support for the rebel cause. He kept in close contact with the U.S. naval forces in the region to react quickly when a rebel cruiser made an appearance. As a result, the infamous commander Napoleon Collins was the U.S.S. Wasserschett was near and ready to take on the notorious Florida. Of course, the crew of Wasserschett could not do anything as long as Florida was in the neutral Brazilian port. However, Collins decided to not be bothered by the little issue of international law and state sovereignty. When Wasserschett arrived in port, most of the crew of Florida were on land for some festivities. Collins decided to send a small boat in the direction of Florida to assess its identity. The U.S. sailors lied about their identity once they had figured out that it was indeed the Florida. The U.S. warship remained out of sight to avoid detection initially by the rebels. The following day, the Washu said sailed into Bahia and anchored at the entrance of the bay to prevent Florida from escaping. Morris was aware of what was afoot and the danger his ship faced. Therefore, he appealed to the provincial political leadership, but perceived two days to finish his repairs and take on new coal. However, the Brazilian official did observe that if Florida and Wasserschitt engaged in battle, the Brazilian military and naval forces in the bay would have to get involved and protect the attack party i.e. the party fired on. At the same time, 
A military official at the meeting suggested moving the Florida closer to Washington to revenge an attack. While Mueller sought Brazilian help, Collins tried to reach out, but the rebel sailors refused to accept the letter as incorrectly addressed to the slope Florida and not the CSS Florida. As a result, Collins asked the U.S. Consul to deliver his challenge for a fine to Florida. Morris refused and told the Consul that the Florida would leave once it had completed its resupply. Collins had no intention of letting Florida escape. In the early morning hours of October 7, Collins weighed anchor and headed towards the Florida to attack. On the extremely close distance of less than a kilometer, five-eighths of a mile, Lashu said open fire. Rough seas in the bay prevented the shells from having the desired effect. Therefore, Lashu said move closer and was within musket range before the rebels knew what had happened. Commanding the ship in the absence of Morris was Lieutenant T.K. Porter. With both ships so close, this naval battle unfolded like an infantry battle, with both sides exchanging small arms fire as the ships tried to get in position to deliver a full broadside. Wasuches was in position first and fired with her 6-inch guns, causing damage to Florida's bulwarks and remove his mizzenmast. Wasuches demanded again Florida surrender, but received no answer. Therefore, Collins ordered another broadside, and for Wasuches to ram the Florida to force its surrender. As it also did not work, Collins dispatched a boarding party to capture the Florida. Nine men escaped over the side and made it to shore, the rest of the men on board were captured. Quickly, Wasuched attached a tow line and pulled out of the bay. As Wasuched got underway, Fort Barra opened fire for violating Brazilian neutrality. This illustrates how quickly this battle went, that only once over, the Brazilians sprang into action. In addition to the fire from Fort Barra, two Brazilian ships headed towards Wasuched. Collins made his escape, but Brazilian authorities were outraged at the actions by the captain of the Wasuchet. The Brazilian government demanded an apology and the prosecution of Collins. Like in previous instances, many in the United States thought Collins had acted correctly, heroically, and Brazil was to blame for what had happened. Despite calls for his removal from duty, Collins remained in the Navy. He eventually commanded the South Pacific Squadron as a rear admiral, where he died in 1875 in Lima, Peru. The Brazilian demand for the return of the Florida became mute when the ship sank after a collision, some have claimed intentionally, in November 1864. With that ended Florida's career, having captured 37 prizes. The United States and Collins had dramatically violated international law, maritime law, and the sovereignty of the Brazilian Empire. While certainly rebel cruisers in their piratical activities were a major nuisance for the United States, that does not excuse such actions. The United States certainly would have reacted very differently had the British done the same with a Russian warship during the Crimean War in St. Charleston. This is one of the darker episodes of the War of the Rebellion, but a fascinating reminder that battles did not just take place on U.S. soil in North America, but at various points around the Atlantic Ocean. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.